Hi, I'm Greg Bohr, and this is my wife, Joan. We're uh, in this uh, gallery together. Uh, we've had shows in the past many years ago, but uh, this is special to us to get our, our uh, pieces together and um, to mention on how important uh, Joan's support and inspiration has been to my work, and I think to a great extent uh, I've been a big fan of hers, of course. And we're um, in different media, we have different backgrounds, she's a professional, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm just on her coattails as a, a hobbyist almost. And but she gave me the opportunity to you know, push myself and to uh, feel challenged and supported. And um, my work with wood has really kind of blossomed, I feel, into uh, something that I, I feel I could bring to a gallery and uh, show and uh, feel good about uh, it's, uh, it's a lot to do with Joan here, though. Um, and uh, I just wondered how you felt about working with uh, me in a gallery. Oh, I loved working with you in a gallery. It's, She's a good shop helper, too. <laughs> <laughs> I clean up mostly. I just like to say that you know, I loved watching you uh, progress as an artist and that you have many qualities that I don't always see in myself. And I, I, I'm really looking forward to moving to this area and, you know, being together here. Because I think we, you know, we, whenever we do things better, we can do things better. So, yeah, you want to talk for us? Well, I just wanted to mention um, what I appreciate a lot about your work, Joan, is, is color. I mean, you, you can pick colors that really um, open you up emotionally. And I, have a, I think you do a fantastic work with, with color as one aspect, and um, you know, just the composition. Otherwise, that you spoke really, you know, I mean, you just helped me appreciate art where I did not have a, and you know, a way of looking at it apart from yeah, that's a lovely, you know, picture. Um, but the, the language of art and everything is kind of something I'm still kind of like. Uh, getting to know, and um, you know, it's been a it's been a real, been a real journey, you know, working together, you know, supporting mm -hmm. you and your work, and it has been a lifetime thing ever since we uh, married some 30 years ago, um, almost 40 years ago now. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a struggle at times. You know, mm -hmm. when you're committed to your art and you're doing it, and it's not always fitting in with your life, but it it's, it happens. And it, and it's always been a part of our lives, and it's, it's come to a point where I think uh, we see how valuable it, 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 it's been. Yeah. So. And our son was able to actually um, minor in art, and he had a show with us here 10 years ago, which is really pretty nice. And I think, again, that the importance of the arts should always be stressed because it's just really a, such a, an opportunity for growth, you know, both for people who are older, like we are, or people who are much younger. And we all need to grow, and, and it's just, it's a wonderful experience. What are we looking at here? What are we talking this about? is um, uh, an urn. I think what is this called? Urn. Ernie. Urn. What is this piece called? Honey? Yeah, Ernie. 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 And if you don't mind me saying so, this actually squid. squid. It, it came partially from an urn that Greg had made for his mom, and when she she died. It was she requested that that you know she make her. So it was really made out of love for his mom, I think, in many ways. And well, it kind of it evolved from that. Sort of yeah, it's evolved from that. It became a lot that, more. But, yeah, it became a lot, lot more. A lot more complicated. But it's but interesting to see where things come from, I think. And it's just, it's beautiful to me. I'm always amazed at the things that Greg does. And he just takes something and he jumps right into it. And I think that's the quality of a really good artist is to just, you know, to, to, to help me with, you know, I can't do this, I can just 
I can do it. And yeah, I would say you know it does take a uh, leap of faith and, and you know just take take it as it comes, and uh, you usually end up getting somewhere. And I get jealous <laughs> of your ability to you get somewhere, and there's plenty. Of, you and know. it helps me. It helps me because I, I become more willing to take more chances, and that's a really good characteristic that I admire of yours. Hello, I'm Gregory Bohr, and I'm here with my wife to show our work here at Washington County Arts. Uh, uh, I call it a museum. It's a gallery that uh, has a lot of wonderful work in it, and uh, we're privileged to be here with our uh, accumulation of, uh, you know, our work in uh, over the last couple of years, um, 19 through 22 maybe the last three or four works, uh, years of work, and I'm just uh, coming to uh, a point where showing the work is uh, a privilege. Um, most of the time we make our work uh, just to you know, improve the quality of our lives. I find that I get a lot of uh, coping, positive coping, I, I guess you would call it, out of uh, my hobby. Initially, it was a hobby for me, and I just got so much uh, gratification, and it, uh, you know, kind of helped me reset my self for another day. Oftentimes, and uh, just found it to be a very relaxing uh, pastime. And my wife, though, she's a professional artist, and she had uh, taken a liking to those things that I was making outside of utility woodworking. I was starting to branch out into doing things that were a little more you know, experimental or, uh, you know, different. And with that, I really, um, yeah, I seem like I've made a lot of mistakes when you're following rules and, um, you know, you're trying to stick to a pattern. But when you're getting into the creative process, you're doing things that are like a little ill-defined or you have your own definitions about what you're after. But nevertheless, you can still run into a lot of problems, frustrations, and um, a lot of failed uh, so-called projects. But uh, out of those failures, they were still a success in my mind because it brought me to a point where I learned what would or wouldn't work for different uh, um, types of wood. And I mainly use wood as a medium and, and uh, different types of finishes, of course. Working on veneering um, is an example and taking veneers out of their usual um, application and trying out uh, processes that just really uh, allow me to depict something that's more uh, of a 
abstraction or a, um, allegory um, type of uh, uh, piece. Um, and then there's challenging but beautiful um, wood to turn and uh, I also got involved with lighting and uh, very popular these days. Resin tables are increasingly popular and that's something I started to look into and I found uh, a lot of opportunity there for um, creativity. There's some, some norms people follow. I've tried some different uh, combinations of, of application methods and this is really one of my first little uh, experimental tables that came out. Uh, nice. I liked it. I gave it some form and it, uh, it uh, felt good. So I moved on to uh, looking at other variations of lighting, illuminating, and uh, there's a lot of uh, growth in that area that I'm looking forward to. So using LED lighting and um, some other, you know, color aspects of uh, resin work is um, something that I'm looking forward to making a lot of mistakes on. There's a lot of money involved and a lot of times you feel like you're spending too much money or time on something, but if you uh, take it in stride, eventually you find yourself growing um, as a result of all those mistakes and that's what I would encourage people to do is uh, if you get into something and it feels like you're just spinning your wheels, uh, take stock and um, eventually you get something that you feel um, is worth bringing into a nice uh, studio um, venue like this and showing it to uh, the people that are interested. Thank you.
Hi everyone, my name is Joan Bohr, and I hope uh, I don't bore you too badly today, but that's my name. Anyway, I've, I've been a working artist for, um, gosh, all my life really, ever since I was, you know, able to hold a pencil, I drew pictures. And um, also I've been, you know, reading a lot since being a kid too, and those things were always closely tied for me. Um, I've been a little bit reluctant, in fact, too reluctant in many ways, I feel, to um, share my work because um, I'm just a little shy about the whole process. But I really want to do it now. It's, it's, um, you know, it's time I'm getting older and it's time for me to bring my work out more. Anyway, um, I just wanted to start by saying also I started out at Tyler School of Art. Um, in Philadelphia, and I was a painting major, and I studied in Rome, Italy, and also later on in Japan. And I just, I had a real love of art of many, many different kinds. And I don't know if this is visible here, but I really studied a lot of things. I spent five days at the Monk Museum in, in Norway, and I even, I don't tell anybody this, everyone, but um, I even touched one of Monk's, um, and he's an artist, for those of you who know, one of his uh, woodblock prints, just because I loved it so much and I could. Um, and I had also a special time that I signed up for to talk to the curator, because I really was the one whose work I really loved. And I wanted to, to know that and be able to incorporate it into my my feelings in my own work, and I feel, feel that there are some extensions. I'm, I'll promise to talk less. Anyway, um, about 10, well, about 20 years ago, I was told diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, but it didn't really start to affect me that much until maybe about 15 years, I'd say, it had affected me more. Anyhow, before that, for, I went to a period where I was chiefly a mother and, and a teacher. And during that time, I didn't, wasn't able to paint as much. But when, when my hands started getting worse, I was no longer able to teach. Not because my hands got worse, but because, you know, I mean, I don't know, it's just too hard. It's too hard for me to do that. I, um, I started painting again. I found that, you know, painting was always my first love, and I really loved it, and actually, I continue to love that. But um, I plan to move out into this area um, because I need I need a quiet place to work, and that's something that we've given each other, and we're very excited about. It. I can remember looking at wallpaper on the wall and and living the wall actually, and just putting things together in different ways, and that to me is a lot of what an artist does: is, you know, look at something, and see it differently. Um, we're going to start over here. This is a painting of a forest, but again, this is, this is something that's been looked at a little differently. Um, the forest where I, I spent the time here that you're looking at was not that interesting to me in some ways. So I had to change my interests and think about the forest differently. This painting is called I get look here, up, 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 and way down. And what this was meant to show was almost like a drone coming down from above the trees and in through the trees and, and kind of exploring the space. And that's what I did with this picture was to explore space. I used different um, line, types of lines, different ways of removing as well as um, adding color and line and different things like that to the picture. And I had a hell of a good time with this. It was just a lot of fun. And it really got me down into the hole. At least I felt it really got me down into the, the hole. This is a picture of um, the roots of a tree. And and the, also the um, the branches of the tree. So say, this picture, I've made several of them, but it's supposed to make you a lot of the paintings that I did this, this time 
were about making you feel like a space was on forever. You just, as far as you can see, as far as you can dig, it's a forever space. And I had a lot of fun with these, and I really enjoyed working. This is another um, of those space tree works, and it also has the neat, to me, feature of being uh, wanting to bring back to mind a quilt, because all this in here is very much to do with um, pattern and its space in terms of the, um, the squareness of some of the areas in here, and also brings to mind the quilts that I worked on because I, I put a lot of embroidery. And anyhow, that's, that, that's an important part to me because I always like to see where, where I'm going as an artist and where other people are going with their work. It's, it's interesting. It makes art history worthwhile. Well, art makes it worthwhile, I guess. This picture right here is was another favorite. And the reason why I liked it so much is because these were actually taken from actual blueberry leaves. I'm crazy about blueberries, but you don't care about that. Um, but anyway, I just loved working on all the little, you know, things about these weird um, root shapes that, that came up in this picture. And they really were weird. I've never seen anything like it. The dead blueberry bush. And, the, you know, the, this was a tree I had to draw, which didn't make sense literally in the drawing, but because I, I put those two pieces together, because obviously they were meant to be there. And I liked that picture a lot. And it was fun, fun to work on. Um, I'd just like to say that I hope that everyone has fun making art, because you know, it, art can be a lot of fun, a lot of joy, bring a lot of joy into your life and other people's lives. And it's a good way to you know, understand other people too. And I think that for me, you know, I think that we really ought to have being in that um, camp of understanding others and having a good time. So thank you very much. And thank you very much for allowing me to um, take part in an event at this wonderful place. Thank you.